Adventure Cave. I'm Anthony, and that's Conrad. Hello! We've done it this week, Conrad. Well, how are you been? How are Back you? Back on top! Back on top! <laughs> uh, I'm well, thank you. Uh, I'm shaken to my core by this episode of 1899, and I cannot wait to discuss it. Yeah, yeah, as many characters were shaken to their core here. Um, mm. So, yes, uh, without further, any further ado, then, just subscribe, guys. Uh, we've got lots of stuff coming. Um, I'm also going to have a couple of 1899 videos releasing soon. Also, I've got the, the Dark Explained video, three years on, uh, cooking away. I didn't actually mention that to Conrad, but I am cooking away. Uh, as well as that, watching lots of other stuff as well. So keep tuned in. I'm sure Conrad has some more things up his sleeve, and we will see you. I don't know. This is not the end of the episode. What am I doing, Conrad? You just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, 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 you're promoting... This is what's called a call to action. Okay, and that's what you're doing. <laughs> Subscribe, hit the bell. <laughs> we we actually are really bad at doing them. Uh, yeah. And our, <laughs> and you might our, our subscribers might also know that we just we just I can't be bothered going through the podcast and putting in mid roll ads in correct times, so I just don't put any in. Like we yeah. are very lazy here at the Colts Cave, yeah. uh, and I'm sure you're, <laughs> yeah. sure you're sure you're thankful for it. But anyway, without any further ado, let's get into Conrad's pre thoughts. <laughs> Uh, hello, welcome to the frozen north where things are so cold that I am wearing my dressing gown over my regular day clothes. Uh, so do not adjust your sets. I am not coming to you from bed. This is just how I dress now and will continue to dress until things improve. So, uh, 1899. Um, well, we left off last episode with a big fight uh, centering around the boy who is uncommunicative at the moment. Uh, I think we'll see him finally speak. It's about time, surely. Five episodes in, um, about time for him to speak. Um, I'm expecting to see more period-appropriate music uh, taking centre stage during the montage. My prediction this time, it's a little bit later than what we've seen. In fact, quite a lot later than what we've seen. But why not Hot for Teacher by Van Halen? That's what I'm looking forward to seeing in episode five of 1899. Um, and one thing I've kind of been looking out for that we haven't really had that uh, thus far is like, and again, I'm sorry to keep comparing it back to Dark. I, I do want this to stand on its own, but Dark in the second season, second season, third season, had a really great like kind of character play episode where it was all focused around a single party that a bunch of characters were attending. Um, and it would work as like a stage play because it's all very self-contained. And I'm waiting for there to be an episode like 1899 of that. I don't know if we'll get it, um, but maybe it's going to be this one maybe the mutineers or the the anti-mutineers are all barricaded in the dining room where we left them in the last episode and it's all going to take place there so uh yeah those are my predictions for the episode let's see how wrong i am hey you yeah 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 you do you like 1899 well as well as these breakdown videos we also do theories unanswered questions and plenty more subscribe so you don't miss it the episode opens with mora waking up in mm. a mountainous landscape, Conrad. Yep. Next to a grave that actually says wake up on it. Um, it does. Not I much mean, to say about this scene. We'll just skip on past. What do you think? Yeah, just move on. <laughs> move on. Um, so this is, yeah, where where she was in the first, at the beginning of the first episode, the opening of mm -hmm. the first episode. We've seen it in wide shots. She's back at the institution. Um, we'll be back here a few times throughout yeah. this episode but this is the first one um something that i noticed um the opening shots of her um it's a very very um uh, extreme close-up on her face or her eyes specifically and you can see something very clearly reflected in her eyes because she's like mm -hmm. lying on her back on the i don't know tundra i don't know what you call this kind of landscape it's not really tundra yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What, what was I calling it? I, call, I was calling it a mountainous landscape. Sure, I don't know. yeah. T tundra's probably quicker to say. We'll go, we'll go with Tundra. We'll go, we'll go with Tundra um, until yeah. someone inevitably corrects us. Um, yeah. So she's, yeah, it's she's lying on quantum, her back. It's actually a quantum landscape. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little something for the people reading the comments. <laughs> so... <laughs> See, <laughs> she's lying on her back, looking up at the sky. We know she's looking up at the sky because it's a it's a shot of her face, and then it turns into a point of view f a shot showing what she's looking at. And it's just the mm. sky. But if you free, if you pause it on the shot of her eyes, you can see something very clearly reflected in her eyes that looks kind of like um, you know, this, like, yeah, yeah, it could be. A <laughs> I, always, I always think that when people talk yeah. about what's <laughs> yeah, in their yeah. eyes, what like, a gaff. 
Probably the cameraman. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, it did look, you know, they, I, I don't know if it's like an x-ray machine, but you know when you go to like the, the, the hospital and they have those like big things on like rails that they like move over your face to take it yeah, to Yeah, like a oh, I guess they have the well. dentists and stuff, yeah. Um, it kind of looked like one of those, like a re- really big kind of like blocky thing. So it could literally okay. could be a camera, but I noticed <laughs> yeah. it. Um, and then interestingly, Maura tells herself to wake up yeah. As opposed to Anton Lesser's character, who we'll find out the name of later in this, who, who yes. he was the one who told her to wake up um, first episode, in the yeah. first episode, but it was her own voice this time. Um, That's so point. I I had a theory that wasn't really born of anything at this point in the episode. So I was, I was already cooking away. I was already beavering away <laughs> at the theory matrix. I, and the good thing about this theory is that, well, there's two good things about it. One is that it's an anti-theory in that my, okay. the, the theory was I don't think Anton Lesser is Henry Singleton. And the other good thing about it is <laughs> it was almost immediately proven to be incorrect. <laughs> like, yeah. like, so it was a real, matrix, a real yeah. quick turnaround on that one. <laughs> Sometimes a theory matrix makes us wait for months, months to get <laughs> yeah, the answer. Yeah. This time it's born fruit straight away, or not born fruit straight away. Yeah, and, it, and if anyone was like accusing me of cheating by coming up with theories and that are correct in the same episode i wouldn't i did think about removing this i'll be honest there was a moment <laughs> where the devil on my shoulder was like should i just get rid of that one <laughs> like but oh i left it in there and it's in the theory matrix immediately uh, marked as wrong that is so so funny um i will also you've you mentioned it there about you like you know people accusing you of cheating and stuff i will just say i know for 89 now we have a lot of new listeners who did well, did listen to our dark stuff go listen to it if you haven't call to action but uh what i'll say is I've said it before, I'll say it again. We trust Conrad here. If you think Conrad's cheating, this isn't the podcast for you. All right? Just just let's just reiterate that, Conrad. What do you think? Yeah, I think I, I, I appreciate the staunch support I receive in in my triumphs and failures because, you know, the the, the pain of these kind of defeats makes victory all the sweeter. <laughs> is, I, I mean, there's, there's, there's no chance... There's no chance who someone who was cheating would come up with alien bug monsters in dark. So let's uh, no. let's just always remember that, and we'll <laughs> and we'll just move on. Okay, there's, so uh, there, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it now, but there's something that happens at the end of this episode that is gonna make oh. me revisit something I said in jest last on the last podcast we did for this one. Oh, because, fantastic. Uh, we're headed in a strange direction. I think it's fair to say. With some, uh, some with of those, it. some of those strange uh, sort of ingest moments over the over the years with this podcast have been my favourite. Where like it comes, out, I don't know what you're talking about here, but it comes out to be something actually true down the line. And yeah. you know, you ha- you have to take it because your brain did come up with it, but at the same time, you in no way meant it to be a theory. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing what that is. Okay, so um, have we covered everything here? We do sort of get a repeat of the dialogue from the first episode where. Yeah. Um, who we now know as Henry Singleton says he was on the Prometheus. No, no, sorry, Maura saying this to him. Uh, he was on the Prometheus, found what you were doing on these ships. Um, yes. So what do we? I think in the very first episode we sort of theorized. What do we theorize anything about what she said there? Not really. Mm. Like I mean, I had some mm. theories about it, but it, but it was more. Um, I, I like at that point I was thinking of this as like a some kind of big memory experiment that her dad was carrying out and her brother was on the ship but all of this wasn't actually happening at the same time and the theories have kind of developed a bit since then and they're still kind of in a way the the actual kind of mystery of where her yeah. brother is i don't think is as relevant to this as the stuff that's kind of creeping at the edges mm-hmm. of this okay. of this storyline here um which we'll i'm sure we'll get more into as we discuss this episode Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Um, okay, so uh, wakes up in the dining room, uh, but as you say, with herself saying to wake up, uh, they lock the boy in the cupboard. Um, yeah, he can't enjoy that. That's not like, come on. <laughs> he can't enjoy that. Um, so he's in the cupboard. Um, now, I thought I did find that funny. Like, I, that was one of my laugh out loud moments. And it's actually something that happens off camera. But I just laughed my head off at the idea of like, Mora collapsing and going to sleep into this like sort of wasteland dream she's in or whatever uh, yeah. but then they, they all immediately grab the boy shove him back in the cupboard yeah, like, like, quick just get yeah. that boy in the cupboard now there's a reason he was in there like we we don't want to admit that the mutineers are right about this one but you know let's let's take some steps to protect ourselves there's something going on so uh, ike says you know we'll let the boy out or not they didn't say let, let him out but he says first you have to tell me why your name's on the prometheus uh, passenger list mm. um obviously she doesn't do that uh, and the the episode title, The Calling, comes up. Um, yeah. 
If I could, then I would. Is that the calling? I can't remember. I think it is a calling, actually. <laughs> We're up high. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, love that song. That's one of my favorite, like, put on their voice uh, singing sort of thing. Yeah, you've got to get really low to, yeah. <laughs> to do that guy's voice. That, yeah, that guy is hilarious. Like, um, yeah. <laughs> successful musician. Um, so, anyway. Um, We'll come back to this ballroom. I keep saying ballroom. I don't know why. It's like bloody Beauty and the Beast or something. It does function uh, as a ballroom. You know, yeah, it's it more w- of a dining room. But C- clear the tables back, like a like a after- afternoon drama class in in school. Yeah. Clear clear them back. <laughs> Let's get dancing. But uh, it would. Um, but but we'll call it the dining room because that's what it is. We'll come back to the dining room in a minute because uh, there's more going on there. Obviously, uh, before we get there though, Franz uh, sort of says we're still in control. Um, mm. He wants to hold the course to America. Uh, they're four days from land. A lot of stuff going on here. Um, sort of, it, this little scene ends with Iben uh, being saying that they're not going to surrender. Justice is is uh, on the side of the survivors. Light will succeed in the end. Um, yeah. So strong history is written by the winners. Energy here, and like yeah, yeah, she yeah. seems she seems to imply that they can kind of make up whatever story they want about what happened here if they kill all of the kill all of the others. Um, Which makes sense, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, in for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> really, I mean, yeah, what, what, yeah, what is she going to do? You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, I sort of, I, I just took this scene, little scene, as as being like, even though this huge thing has happened in terms of throwing the boy off or whatever, um, they, they're they're still resolute in their in their uh, in their sort of quests to go to America and to continue with this mutiny. Um, yeah. It, like, I think that's that's what this uh, this served. Um, Tova and Cresta uh, talking about Ada, so mourning her a little bit. Bathing uh, piglets. Huh? Ba- bathing piglets. That was yes, like the one yeah. thing I wrote down in there. It's like, remember when Ada bathed a piglet? And I'm like, all right, it's a strange, a strange thing to remember at this point. But you know, whatever. <laughs> Babe, we all grieve that. in our own way. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like, that's what it is, you know. They're sitting there remembering the happy times, like when she bathed a piglet. <laughs> um, Tova says that Iben is mad. Um, Cresta says, actually, this is a really, really interesting part, actually. Cresta basically says that Tova has killed two. Yes, so not like you haven't killed before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it won't surprise anyone to know. I've got a theory about this. I had speculated on uh, the nature of uh, Tova's uh, uh, relationship with Ada. I said that maybe Ada was her daughter. Mm-hmm. I have I interpreted this as that she's had an abortion before, but I had also speculated that uh, her preg- current pregnancy... Um, is the result of abuse and mm. so maybe she has you know maybe she murdered her abuser or something like that um, okay. so I'm not I like I have put it in the theory matrix but I'm kind of split on that one I'm thinking mm, is that an abortion or is that literal literal murder like rather than the kind of fake insane Christian definition of murder we're talking about there um, okay so, okay. So, but, okay. So, basically, you think Cresta is like saying that may, potentially, potentially, because he's fully bought into like the Christian way of well, his mother at this point. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what I kind of got caught up on because I was like, Cresta doesn't actually seem to have fully drunk the Kool Aid, so I don't see him. He doesn't strike me as the kind of like abortion is murder, one of those types. Um, that seems like the kind of thing that even would would say. Um, so maybe it's more like she she was you know abused or, and, and and murdered her abuser or something along those lines okay. um actually the thing that really struck me in this scene and it only really kind of came to fruition by the end of the episode is uh, when they're talking about even they say that she's gone insane and that she's created her own world now I have a pretty keen sense of smell when it comes to red herrings <laughs> and that's one right there but hidden within that red herring is a grain of truth which is that this episode features what I think is a pretty singular focus on a woman who has perhaps created her own world and has disappeared into it. And it's not even. And I think most people will know where that's going, but we'll discuss that as it comes up uh, later in the episode. Mm-hmm, yes, we will get to Clement Ooh, later. Breadcrumbs. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Wilson! Is that a name? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Virginia. Um, Virginia. So the uh, I don't know. I'm just I mentioned everything, right? But like the engine room, uh, the little machine in the engine room lights up. We see yep. it through the hole in the door. Software uh, in a way. Kind of reminded me of like one of the holes in like a you know like a kitchen in a restaurant's door. Um, don't know why. Just just did Gordon Ramsay's way in there. Anyway, <laughs> um, so actually, Lucian and Clemence are here now. 
Uh, yep. Now, not for the first time, not for the first time in this series, Conrad, I was thinking of Les Miserables here, because basically we've got Jean Valjean. Lucien yep. has masqueraded as an upperclassman, didn't quite become the mayor like Jean Valjean did, yeah. but this is definitely his moment where he's like, I'm Jean Valjean, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, Lucien pretended to be the lieutenant. We already knew that, but it, it made him be able to convince uh, Clemence's father that he had land and all this sort of stuff, and that's how mm. he managed to marry Clemence. Yeah, he's got an uncle in Marseille, apparently, which they both admit uh, is not real. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, like uh, we talked in the last couple of episodes about certain characters having having their backstories kind of shaded in, so to speak. And Laurent gets a bit here um, with um, him saying that. He feels you like said he Laurent. Do you say this? Say Laurent. I did just call him Laurent. What is his name now? I've, I've just Lucien. I've Lucien Laurent. Where did I get that from? I've like <laughs> Laura Robert. Laura Robert. Yeah, I, I, I wrote that down and then I read it and I was like, that's not his name. And I know Alfie's we were talking call about me up on we, we, yeah, we, we were talking about one Pablo Angel the other day. Now we're talking about Laura Robert. <laughs> Two thousands Premier League coming through. Fan- fantastic, Manche- yeah. <laughs> yeah, fantastic Manchester United uh, <laughs> centre back. Um, yeah, Lucian. I've not. I, I, the, the weird thing about that is I've written his name down as Lucian later in in my notes. <laughs> so the what. name Laurent is pop. Is that the and name of the uncle in Marseille? Maybe I don't know what's happened there. But either way, <laughs> Lucian slash Laurent. Maybe a, <laughs> like maybe another character that we're unaware of. Another a, a nom de pleur um, of, uh, <laughs> of Lucian. See if it comes out in like season three that Lucian was actually born with the name Laurent. People are gonna oh. be like, "What is going on?" So many points in the theory matrix for that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he says he he knows that he can't have like a life or love, but pre- presumably because he's dying. But also, yeah. you know, he kind of bears the weight of his of his crimes and his betrayals. Um, so you know, he can't he can't forgive himself and move on with the rest of his life. So it's just you know an interesting an interesting bit of. Um, um, development for his character yeah. that makes him not fully sympathetic but certainly a little bit more sympathetic than he was a few episodes ago yeah yeah, yeah. i know what you mean it does interest me a little bit actually to i know he's i know he's dying so therefore that probably is where this is coming from but the idea that he's he like fakes his way into this upper society to get clemence and now he's like just he hates her because he would never be able to get her if he didn't yeah. lie yeah, it's she like, like and she's like a manifestation or not manifestation, but like a representation of what he had the things that he's done wrong. Like he despises her yeah. because she represents what the the crimes he's had to commit to to get to where he is. Y- yeah, yeah. Not not really fair on old Clemence there, I don't think. Um uh okay, so Tova joins Ike's crew. So she's she, she basically jumps ship in the in the mutiny. Um, I couldn't believe decided... this. I couldn't believe this. Like I I speculated in my pre-show thoughts that this was going to be like the chamber play episode, you know, like how in Dark season two there's the party episode, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. where it kind of would work as a stage play because it's all happening in a very kind of like self-contained environment. And I was like, maybe we'll get an episode like this, and maybe it's going to be this one where they're like barricaded into the dining room, and it's just like a big sort of character drama with people moving yeah, between yeah, groups. Yeah. And then Tova just fucking walks in like there's no barricade. <laughs> <laughs> you're not even watching the doors guys so i couldn't believe it yeah yeah she literally just crosses crosses the hallway um and says you know what this is this is nonsense i'm on your team now probably isn't a good idea to kill a young boy um yeah, yeah. I, okay I, I probably i agree with her decision um but it's funny like basically i, I you, you've known this from my from from my uh my thumbnails and stuff over the years right but like basically the whole idea of these immigrants being on this ship and going across and having divisions and not understanding each other there was an element and a long time listeners to the channel are going to laugh when it says there's an element that's been inspired by modern day politics brexit mm. you know polarization basically and i every so that, even though it's just an overall theme so i shouldn't analyze it too deeply right but i do find myself being like you know because the idea is like you know half the people were like you know that that boy is what's causing problems on this ship basically like blame the immigrants blame the immigrants yeah so so or a very clearly innocent scapegoat as well it's like yeah, yeah. it's like an eight-year-old boy it's clearly not his fault yeah so i i started like um 
I, I started like thinking to myself like oh, okay, okay so why would someone move from the leave to the remain part you know you know because tova's done that and i'm like oh, no no it's not you know, okay let's just stop that now they were inspired by it we don't have to go into <laughs> yeah. all the granular detail um but but anyway so that's how which I'm one of... of these characters is nigel farage that's what i want to know is it is it franz no it's anchor definitely anchor yeah, that's true. It is anchor, isn't it? Yeah. Just like I can imagine Nigel Farage like sitting and crying, thinking, "What am I doing? What am I doing?" <laughs> yeah. While you know, while Dominic Cummings is like Eben, you know, like <laughs> making him do everything. Oh, that's a nice image. That makes me feel happy, a warm inside to imagine Nigel Farage crying himself to sleep. At night. Oh, I, I, I would absolutely love it. I would absolutely love it. Um, I'm not going to get into Nigel Farage, but I've got a lot to say about him. Anyway, so Tova joins Ike's crew um yes, now this here. is this is the this is the bit now, this is this is the key this is the there's bit. a couple of things that happen <laughs> yeah. here that we probably need to discuss right okay so first things first right let's just mention that <laughs> Mora goes to let the boy out of the cage right or yeah. the, the, the the cupboard and time stops yep slows down actually it doesn't stop immediately because daniel's still able to get into the air right so yeah first frozen question. in a very funny pose actually i have to <laughs> yeah. say he's no yeah. he's nowhere <laughs> close to stopping the bullet that's about to yeah. hit mora yeah yeah that's why it was my first question is what was daniel doing there because i know I mean, it, it looks fun <laughs> i know it looks cool whenever you're fro- frozen but what was the thought yeah. process he, he's like well okay so if we're really breaking this down Daniel knows what the boy can do because they have discussions later in this episode that reveal that that they're pretty much working on the same wavelength. So, if he knows what the boy can do, he knows he's nowhere close to stopping this bullet. But he's got to put in a good show for more of that to be like, look, I'm on your side here. So, like, so he's throwing himself at it. But it's like that time that, like, John Terry, do you remember when he, like, dived in front of a shot, but he did it like a fish because he didn't want to put his hands up to give away a handball. Yeah. So he kind of, like, just, like, did that along the floor. That's what he's doing. It's a, it's a desperate attempt. He knows it's not going to work, but it's performative. Okay, all right, all right. Well, I, I wasn't going down that route. I, I was actually giving Daniel <laughs> better the doubt there. But actually, no, you know, fair enough, fair enough. He's playing a game. He wants more to see him. I did think it was funny, though. Like, yeah, he's literally it's horizontal. So he's he's so horizontal. <laughs> it's so good. But what was he, like, was he jumping at the gun? Or was he just jumping, like, just to be like, don't open the thing? You know, I really, I just, I, I really don't know. Um. Anyway, so that's that. But basically, what do you mm. think about the whole time stop situation? Right, okay, so... I I made another theory here that um, <clears throat> is, I'm pretty sure, by the end of the episode, I'm pretty sure it's wrong. But the fact the boy was able to like project some kind of like time dilation field made me immediately think, okay, right, so he is in control of the entire simulation because there's do no way think, he could do that. At, why do you think it's confirmed that he did, that he's in control of that? I know well, she I don't asked. Think, I, I, she, she I don't asked, think it's um, yeah. confirmed. She, I think it's confirmed that he doesn't. That someone else is is my is my thinking. Oh, okay, yeah. Because she she said to him, you know, like how did you, how did you do? Mora asked him, like, how did you do that? You know, did you do it with that and point to the pyramid thing? And he just didn't answer that question. So I even like obviously all our minds were thinking it, and Mora thought it as well. Mm. But as we know with Dark as well, sometimes we shouldn't just trust the thoughts of the characters. And yeah, believe yeah. That like characters can yeah. be flawed, and I think Mora more and more. Not only I, I'd like I don't think she's duplicitous, but more and more I don't think Moira's own thoughts and thought processes can be trusted. And I think it's a very clever way of. I don't want to get too sidetracked into Moira just yet because there's going to be a lot of Moira later. I think, but the writing of her character has been very clever because she's presented as a moral and thoughtful and and um <clears throat> what's the word i'm looking for i don't want to say like sensible isn't really the right, right word like logical i guess you know she's mm. she's a, a medical professional you know she she works in a field that requires a certain amount of level headedness so you've got all these these facets that establish her character as someone who when we see her point of view and we hear her thought process and hear her opinions we're being conditioned to trust implicitly that what she's saying and perceiving is mm-hmm. the truth and i think that's actually very cleverly misdirecting us <clears throat> from the fact that I think Mora might be very centrally involved in everything that's going on here and she isn't aware of it. But so in this scene with this time dilation field, and I think this is an element of that as well. Like they're they're pointing you at this child as the one who's in control of everything because he displays such a phenomenal mm-hmm. ability within this simulation 
to if it, if indeed it is a simulation to stop everything to like freeze time um but from a pro- so we've talked a lot about like computer science and from a programming perspective that isn't actually mm-hmm. definitively true like this could have been the result of like a poorly handled error for instance like it's not necessarily yeah. like the boy could be exploiting it but he's it's not necessarily him having such control over the simulation that he can he can actually stop it so much as exploiting another bug basically yeah, um okay. So, I think by the end of this episode, I was in a position where Daniel and the boy, I was like, they definitely have good, not like a firm knowledge of the inner workings of the simulation, but I don't think they're the ones who are like pulling the strings, so to speak. Okay. Okay. Do you think we obviously you've implied certain things there, but if you're implying those certain things, which we'll talk about later, like I'm interested to know like what you think the role of like Henry is, for example. So, um, well, I'm sure we'll okay. get into the meat of it later, like that. Yes, so we'll get we'll get keep, we'll yeah, get to Henry. Room. Don't you worry about that. We'll get to Henry. <laughs> um, the only other thing I want to say about this scene, or well, actually, I've got one big thing for this scene, including like when the alarm begins to go off in a second. But before we get to the alarm, uh, as the time dilation kind of field takes effect, Ramiro just issues this like really, really like guttural like what like in portuguese <laughs> and it's like it's very succinct and i really it made me laugh <laughs> just like, yeah, that's probably that's the right response i would say to this happening <laughs> that's brilliant that's brilliant <laughs> um okay yeah so whenever the, the it all starts again and like all oh, sort of the time starts again they're gone because uh more, more takes the boy away now yeah. Daniel here, very interesting to me. Daniel seems to, yes, he seems to be manipulating things with his little device and stuff the whole way through uh, the season so far. But but at this point, it really struck me. In, whenever Mora and the boy were gone, he looked terrified. Yeah, like he he looked like what he. This is exactly what he didn't want to happen. Um, did you note that about him there? Yeah, I d- like it. Definitely did seem to be the case in in the way it was being performed and that. Having just said it's 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 the performance of the uh, the actor. Like it doesn't actually seem performative from a character standpoint because mm-hmm. Mora seems like the person that he is most interested in. He doesn't really seem to give a shit about how everyone else feels about him. So there's no reason yeah. for him to put on this like performance. Um, so yeah, again, an- another instance of like these two know how this works and they know how to manipulate elements of it, but there's definitely things going wrong. Um, with whatever their plan is that implies they're not these all powerful beings who have, you know, significant control. Okay. Okay. Uh, interesting. Um, we then get the, the, what I like to call the classic Brexit line. Daniel says, we need to take back control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Uh, and they're going, well, I mean, control is taken back shortly after this, but n- probably not by who he'd like it to have been taken back by. I'll say that much for it. Okay. Um, uh, sirens start. Mm. Um, then we also get like like a metronome ticking, right? Yeah. Um, and all the people, there's a load of people on the boat, start walking to that ticking. Um, some main characters. Uh, yes. And they walk and throw themselves off the side of the ship. Uh, now, there are individual character moments we can talk about, but overall... What was your reaction to this? Uh, it was amazing. Like so, in terms of like the actual spectacle from beginning to end, it's it's very grim. Um, it's it's fantastically dark, uh, and it it comes out of not nowhere because they've kind of set up elements of this. Um, but this is like this this real kind of the, this overwhelming display of control over these these people that I I really really love. Um, now. You've yeah. men- mentioned something there that's okay. okay. It's a classic mistake, Anthony, is what you've made there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I called it a metronome. What was it? You what called it? it a metronome. No, it, no. So, <laughs> the, I think you're supposed to think it's a metronome because it's like, well, this is set in 1899. Of course it's a metronome. What else would it be? And I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. pro- computer processors have clocks in them. Um, they do. And, and uh, that's literally what clock speed means. Um, so... It's definitely, I think, meant to <laughs> evoke this image of the metronome and these people marching out in lockstep. But the fact that everyone is taking steps in time with this metronome is mm-hmm. not because it's dictating time, but because 
each action they are performing is limited to the one rotation of the clock in yeah, a yeah, computer yeah. Cr- processor. So you can only act basically like with a with the processor, you can only execute one command per rotation of the clock unless you do things like multi-threading and have extra cores and all that jazz. We don't need to worry about that. This this pro- for the for the purposes of this, there's probably one clock. So one. I mean, we're talking about eighteen ninety nine technology here. There's only one clock. Well, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They probably don't know. Well, I mean, we'll see. By the end of this episode, who knows? The gloves are off. <laughs> So the people marching off, so that's theory number one, is that the clock that we're hearing here is a literal computer processor, and these rotations of that clock are executing commands that are commanding these people <clears throat> to to march off. Now, the people who are marching off, this is theory number two here, are, I think, aspects of the program, not real people. So, and that includes Ling Yi's mum, that includes Cresta, that includes Dr. Dickhead, all of those people who march off, and Mrs. Wilson, who we'll come come to later, mm. um, they are not real people. In within the context of the simulation, um, it doesn't really matter because they. I, I and I th- I hope and I think that eighteen ninety nine is going to probably get into some Blade Runner territory and like, well, what is the difference between a real person and someone who exists? within this simulation like is mm-hmm. there a difference what is consciousness all that good stuff um but the the i think this is clearly delineating those who are projections of human minds for like possessed of uh, of real human bodies and those who are programs within the simulation and i think that's uh, that's like something that we're gonna maybe see more of in this uh in this uh, well hopefully in this season but definitely in this show as it as it goes on is these two groups of humans and non-humans i guess interesting okay so your your theory uh to sum it up is that there are everyone who's sort of still on the boat except potentially mrs wilson is a real person who's plugged into some sort of simulation and we have everyone else who walked over the side is actually a computer program. Are you going to yes. extend that and even say that you think the people who Daniel's already switched off are computer programs, or are they real people? Um, I'm. I think they're all. Yeah, I think everyone he switched off is probably a, a computer program as well. I don't think he could. I don't think he could do it to a real person. He did say sorry when he switched off Ada. Why would he do that? If it was a computer program. That's true, but I mean that gets into, you know, the morality of. AI versus human consciousness I guess if that is indeed the direction they go in you know like if Daniel has a functional understanding of how this simulation works he may have arrived at a kind of point of having empathy or sympathy for the computer programs within the simulation because they are functionally identical to humans so maybe it's that but I could also just be wrong. I could, like, maybe, maybe he's killed people. Maybe We're assuming he's an killed. awful lot here. This is the real boat. And, yes, uh, real, that's true. Real stuff going on. Um, yeah, it's okay. I will say on, on Reddit, I saw someone post. Now, I, I, you know, everyone enjoy the show at, at your own in your own way, right? But I don't. When a man switches off a little girl, and then you've watched the whole series and can't, and then go to Reddit and say, just one question I had: Why did Daniel say sorry when he switched off Ada? I, was like, I, I don't know what's going on in that person's mind. I've seen that question on the subreddit about eight times. People mm. just like, the only question they have from the whole series is why did Daniel say sorry to Ada? It's like, he's turning off a little girl. Like, what's... Yeah. The only what's, one? What's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no other questions? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah anyway, I mean, yeah. It, like, it, it might... You know, it could just be as simple as like... I don't know, like, if you put, if you put like a perfect... Uh, like recreation of a little girl in front of me and like c- were able to categorically promise me that she would feel no pain and that she wasn't actually a real person and that she she like it, it was all just this very elaborate reconstruction of what is quote unquote real and then gave me a gun and told me to kill them I it doesn't wouldn't make it easy like it wouldn't make yeah. it an easy thing to do that's the answer to that is I, I think is that you know it's it's maybe just like basic level human empathy to be like i'm not i don't i don't feel comfortable doing this <laughs> yeah like I, yeah when i was like 17 or something uh, a bird flew into our into our window and it was like it broke its neck and stuff and it was like i think it was those blood and everything and this thing just wasn't going to survive and it was so and i felt really sad dropping a shoe on it right <laughs> i dropped a shoe on the bird i had to put it out of its misery right it was it, <laughs> i don't know why i i, I couldn't be i couldn't swing 
the shoe, right? So yeah. I was like, you know, you, you couldn't, know what? but you couldn't ex- exert force. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I'll go up to the second floor. I'll, I'll, I'll release the shoe. If gravity does the job, gravity yeah, does the job. That's on God at that point. God. I will on. say <laughs> yes. I will say maybe the redditor, redditor has a point because I didn't say sorry audibly, but I definitely felt sorry. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but, you, you live and you learn, Conrad. You live and you yes. learn. Yes. Well, I, I, I was going to say the thing I was really sorry about here is that the comedy double act isn't real. The comedy oh. double act is gone. And that's one of them, a lo- one that's of a loss. I don't think. Man. Yeah, Landon. I don't think we'll. I don't know if we'll ever recover from that. To be, so <laughs> to so be you're honest. saying w- within this program, it is it is uh ma- it has like programmed in that this man should wear garlic around his neck. Yeah, yeah. That's that's like a method apply garlic within the class of Landon is what we're seeing here. Um, and and but, Cresta, Cresta. Yeah, Cresta's gone. And I, I, I like the thing that's that that really, the thing that really bakes my noodle. To, to quote the Matrix, um, <laughs> it, it seems like an appropriate time to quote the Matrix. Um, yeah. Is why for all of this? That's the that's the thing that I really was thinking about throughout this episode. Like, what end mm-hmm. does this serve for the people or or peop- uh, or, or person in control of the simulation? And I don't I don't know the answer yet. Um, except except perhaps to force those who are left into some kind of action. Um, but it's. Yeah, that's that's like one of the overriding thoughts I had after this, which is like, what what does this do? Where where does this put us? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a big action in it. I think there's also some some talk later on. We'll get there. Um, whenever uh, Daniel is trying to turn off the uh, the machine down in yes. the down in the engine yeah. room, saying that he needs to reset it, otherwise it's all going to start again. That's what he says. Um, yes. Or turn it off, otherwise it's all going to start again. So the idea is that something about this machine is going to reset the simulation and in a in a way these these uh people or ais or whatever they are whatever you think they are had to had to sort of end and die in order to start the simulation again Mm. um or maybe that's just like the end of the end of the process like sort of programming that comes into play um but anyway yeah so uh we'll we'll touch on that a little bit later as well um i'm not going to talk in in particular about all the different little characters reactions you know there's a lot of characters who are shocked and horrified uh yeah. by people going over the side as you would um be. as you, as you would be um and the um the the the, the, the one thing I, I will actually say before we move on from it the wide shot of the uh kerberos with like just the bodies like oh, pouring over okay. the edge what a shot what a shot yeah yeah is. yeah i thought that was really cool yeah i thought that was really cool too um there'll be definitely room on these lifeboats for the men unlike in titanic um <laughs> yeah they'll be they'll be roomy they'll be, they'll, they'll, they'll be like <laughs> yeah. two people to each one at, th- at this rate i mean forget about the could the door hold two people argument they're gonna have a boat each these ones. yeah you uh, can put a bed on that thing <laughs> like you'll be you'll be fine. little dining room everything yeah. chaise lounge yeah. <laughs> right okay so the boy and mora are in the room the Mo- yeah. mora says what's going on what's going on why don't you talk to me finally conrad finally yeah. the boy opens up uh so the boy first of all gets a little bit of paper and writes they are listening yeah and then uh whispers in the ear sonny is like why did he just whisper they are listening right but anyway he whispers <laughs> yeah. in the ear saying i can't tell you you have to ask the creator oh yes. ho, ho. it's a biggie it's, it's a, a biggie. big word it's a big word yes so you know obviously the question here is who is the creator presumably someone we haven't met yet or haven't we that's all I'm saying there. But <laughs> the, who is the creator and what does he do? <laughs> yeah, a detective, John Kimball. Um, <laughs> do you remember that? We should get that soundboard for this podcard. It's just yeah, Arnold yeah, Schwarzenegger, yeah. <laughs> detective John Kimball. It's not a Um Anyway, that's <laughs> that's quite enough of that for the the, the, the four people listening. So. This is kind of dumb. Not like I love most of the things in this episode. I want to make that clear. I, this is this is a nitpick, but it is kind of dumb that he doesn't speak, and the reason he doesn't speak is because they are listening. And then for the rest of this episode, you can't shut him up. He like he'll <laughs> yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. like he'll just keep speaking. And it's like he didn't speak in the previous episodes because the show needed a mystery around him, not because mm-hmm. there's any actual reason for him not to be speaking. Because if he can just whisper. Well then, just fucking whisper. Like you don't have to be like not talking the whole time. So okay, I'm gonna come to bat here for uh, old Baron okay. and Yon- Yonche, okay. right? Now, 
he was speaking freely later on when he goes into the I don't know what you would call it the shaft world right yeah so sure. he was speaking freely once once in there that makes me think that in there they can't really like see them or maybe they mm. can't really hear them pro as as well you know what I mean yeah. so so Mike then then I will say this he said I can't tell you you have to ask the creator just before taking Mora in the shaft world yeah that's true so that makes me think that he was like right well i'm getting out of here anyway so i may as well start talking now you know what i mean um mm, okay that's that's sort of what i was thinking I, I think i think i i can i can defend it a little bit you know what i mean yeah I, I mean, I and it is a nitpick, i know what you mean i'd like to be clear i i'm 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 just nitpicking but it like kind of struck me i was like okay like i feel like he could have yeah. he could have said something soon <laughs> like, he, could, well, he could have been. He could have definitely been writing on paper. He could have written uh, something down. Yeah, it's like, come on. <laughs> like, you don't need yeah, to. Be... Although he does say, he does say, I can't tell you. So therefore, mm. I suppose he was probably worried. Like, if he started writing things on paper the first day, see, within a couple of hours, she would have had him babbling away over a cup of tea. Like, he, yeah, she'd he have like, he'd have written War and Peace by the time we got to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he was just like holding it back, just you know. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, Okay, well, I want to say more about that, but we'll get there when we get to the Daniel stuff. Yeah. So, uh, Connor McGregor sends another triangle message. Up to no good. Almost as if he know. Well, for a start, seems untroubled by the mass suicide going on on the ship. Um, almost as if he knows what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I mean, come on. He knows this little triangle button thing is there. Yeah. He knows what's going on. He knows. Yeah, he Connor, knows you, can't, you can't get much by McGregor. <laughs> so, Tova learns what happened to Cresta. Um, yes. Even even is very shocked. Now, this is the actually when I first watched this, I was convinced that whenever they all tied themselves to beds and stuff, that even was actually in the process of like walking off the side of the ship. But I think actually mm. on a rewatch, I think actually she's just like really shocked that Crest is dead and that they can't really rouse anything out of her at this moment. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. I think it's more that. I think it's it's her being in it's her being in shock. Um, I had something. I'm trying to remember where I wrote it down now. But basically, um, hold on. Let me control F. You. Where is it? Okay. Let's see if you get some. Oh, there Let's it is. Yeah. Some. Okay. I found it. So um, yeah, about them tying themselves to the beds. Just something I wanted to mention. Just to yeah, just yeah, to cool. sh just to show off my Greek mythology chops. Um, so you're gonna have you're gonna have serious chops step up to this step up to this plate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I, I think I predicted every single Greek myth was gonna be present in this show. So yeah, well, I mean the Ulysses one is a banker when you're talking about things at sea, um, and obviously didn't, didn't mention didn't mention that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> You idiot! Um, <laughs> no, so Ulysses basically. Um, and I, I'm, I'm like, I'm not an expert on this. I should I'd preface this with that. But yeah, um, yeah. he, he, uh, when him and his crew sail past the sirens, they put wax in their ears and and uh, strap oh, yeah, themselves yeah. to like the masts of their ship, um, mm -hmm. so as not to be drawn in by the sirens. And I did very much love the imagery literal of sirens the, literal yeah sirens it, exactly like yeah the, and the image of the crew uh, the surviving crew and mutineers like binding themselves to something so as not to be drawn in by this which I mean you know if we follow that through it does imply that they would have also been affected by yeah. the by the, the commands of the of the the, 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 the clock um, but they didn't confirm like in the morning or whatever whenever it all stopped they didn't confirm or deny they didn't show anything about like them being tranced and then trying to walk. no no yeah so, there's so none of we that. didn't actually see any of that so yeah but um but yeah so i mean talking about um like the crews kind of um meeting after after they've like more well, after cresta has has died yeah there's there's like it's really just shock i think and mm. it's an interesting term for even as well actually at that point because I didn't expect her character to like have the like facade of control and power broken so quickly after she like rose to prominence in in, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. The, in the show. But it's literally like the next episode. It's like, oh, your son's dead and you're ruined as a result of this. So it'll be, it'll <laughs> yeah, be interesting yeah. to see how she comes back from this. Oh yeah, or if at all. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the boy leads more down the shaft. Uh, yeah, says don't chat away. <laughs> Says, don't, yeah, don't chat away. Don't, don't be afraid. Uh, he deploys the beetle. He uh, does. Cre be creates yeah. a, a, a tunnel. Just going to say, like, you know, Baron and Yoncha, they love a tunnel. They oh. love a tunnel. That's, that's like, point one. Anytime they get a budget for a new show, they're like, 
show me the let's see what kind of tunnel we can get for this one <laughs> okay <laughs> show me the tunnels baron uh, <laughs> but uh yeah so he he like uh, mora pops out in the place that she woke up at the beginning of this episode no boy in sight which I take to mean um, that he is in a different instance of this to her mm. and has deliberately dumped her into her own one. Um, the cross no longer reads wake up. Yeah. Pre- um, I'm not sure the significance of that just yet. I haven't really kind of got, got my head around the significance of it not saying wake up, except that it obviously denotes that this is different to um, the one that we saw her in early, earlier. And another thing that I haven't really mentioned because I haven't actually got a clear look at it yet, but Mora has a habit of grabbing her necklace um, yeah. when in a tense situation. Um, now, my mind, when any anyone does that, is that it's an implication of like a show of faith like it's a crucifix of some sort um Mm -hmm. but you'll have to correct me if i'm wrong i don't think we've actually seen what her necklace is yet unless i've just missed it well it's definitely not a crucifix we know that i i i know what it looks like but i can't remember i seem to remember we did see it we might have seen it and i've just missed it but um yeah i'd like I'll, i'll be interested to see when that comes back around again because i'm i was like what the, what is going on with that necklace it's got to be like a photo of a loved one or something like that um but yeah, like uh, she, yeah she holds it like it's very important to her yeah i know yeah. exactly what you mean yeah and they do keep focusing on that you know what i mean so mm. maybe that is maybe that's something something to, to keep in mind uh daniel sees the shaft and isn't happy he says uh, an expletive it actually it <laughs> yeah, is, it's a really good it's a really good one too he really puts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, puts his whole ass into it when he shouts. yeah <laughs> his whole ass yeah he's a bit of welly um <laughs> he uses a device to open the tunnel so he didn't yeah. actually need to use the bug this time which does beg the question as to why he's been using bugs all over the all over the ship mm, maybe yeah. maybe maybe it's just that well i suppose i suppose he, he he we've never seen him go through these tunnels before no so maybe the bugs can get you anywhere but like his he can only open the tunnel doorways with his little machine maybe he can't open the normal doors anyway it's i thought i just thought it was interesting um so uh he uses the device to get into the tunnel there yeah. he finds the boy and they have a yeah. little chat so i've actually written down what the chat is so i'll go through it and then we can discuss what it would be um, in refer- reference to potentially so yeah. uh daniel who i've written as dan here just sort of you know, <laughs> take take it down to nickname terms yeah so daniel says uh you shouldn't have uh, done that he knows we're here now uh who's I, think the it says it, I think it says it knows oh it actually now. no i've actually written it yeah, yeah, I've actually written it. Yeah, I don't know yeah. why I said he. Um, so it. What's the it in question there? Well, that sounds like the creator, presumably. But by the end of this episode, I'm not going to be. I don't think I'll be using the term create the creator for very long, because I think we know who the creator is. <laughs> I think I think this this episode makes it abundantly clear who the creator is, um, and I think they're someone we've already met. Okay, very interesting to me. Um, <laughs> It. Okay, so you think it is the creator. Okay, so then the boy uh, says, we've never made it this far. Maybe it'll work this time. <laughs> yeah. As soon as they said that, I was like, Baron Bird and Jan Shafris, you <laughs> dogs, you've done <laughs> yeah, it again. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not quite the same thing as Dark, but it was just like, all right, I see what we're doing here. <laughs> a, little, a little loop, perhaps, that we might yeah, be stuck yeah, yeah. in. In fact, actually, that was uh, that was one of my in my video. Uh, Eighteen ninety nine and dark is like the uh, characters, uh, you know, having the idea that there's like cycles and loops and stuff. Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely a similarity. Um, also talking about, um, but like we, we've talked, they talk about like restarting it again. Yeah. We've seen like we've seen like you know a, a ship uh, in the Prometheus that something's happened on. We're not quite sure what it is. Yeah. There's a load of hints to the idea that these, like, at least in this show, these cycles might actually be real, you know, actually happening in some way. You know what I mean? We've definitely yeah. seen the technology that is impl- implying that, um, which I think is really interesting because it's like, it's again, we talked, I said, I said to you one, one part that may be really interested in your, like, you know, computer science theory is the fact that they've done a film about that. And this might be stuff that hit the cutting room floor. Well, maybe this version of like cycles and loops and stuff is what hit the cutting cutting room floor and dark as well you know what i mean yeah, like it could easily be like a, an amalgamation of ideas that they had left over from their earlier projects yeah, yeah it could be yeah that's what i was thinking too so um all right so maybe uh, it'll work this time 
So, in terms of the boy saying we've never made it this far, what what do you mm. take from that? What do you what do you think about that? So, what, uh, I'm trying to think how to do this without without giving the game away, so to speak. So, okay, <laughs> I think. Well, okay, I'll I'll say a bit of what I think. Okay, I I, I think that the people who are left, the ones who I think are humans, it could potentially be everyone, but I think the the but the certainly the ones who are left. The actual like confirmed human minds are part of su- of a shared simulation, and their consciousnesses are being used to power the simulation. Like there's a there's like lots of kind of highfalutin ideas about how the human brain is essentially just a computer. Um, I mean, it's kind of yeah. true. Like in some in some ways, it's true. Um, and I think that's maybe what we're tapping into here. And so by like the by everyone and actually i might be undoing myself here because the more i think about it i was saying before why did whoever's in charge of this simulation want everyone to throw themselves over the edge what purpose does that serve and i suppose the more i think about it if it wanted to restart the simulation in its own way <clears throat> it would have to kill quote unquote everyone in the simulation to then bring them back it would still all be happening within their shared consciousness that is acting as mm-hmm. like the the thing that's powering the simulation but um uh that would yeah that would kind of make sense for what its end goal was there in terms of them i guess they're their end game here is clearly to stop the ship from sinking and by extension everyone on board the ship dying because i don't see how the ship sinks and everyone on it is fine it seems unlikely Mm -hmm. if they're still like three days from from land or whatever it's however however far it is they said they're they're from land in this episode um so they are they are trying to avoid like a traumatic disaster that will essentially kill everyone and allow the simulation to restart um as to how they're aware of all these restarts, I'm not fully sure yet. But I think they must be they must be a part of the simulation. Maybe they're computer. It's so hard to pin down whether they are actually computer programs or people within it. I like I I like after this scene, particularly where uh, the boy says she didn't remember. Um, mm-hmm implying obviously they've done stuff with Mora before I'm convinced one of these two is her actual brother like I'm almost certain of it um and it seems like they're trying to like jolt her awake by making her experience things um so Mm. I but I don't know if her brother's still alive is the thing I wonder if one of these two is her brother. I actually said early on that I think they're both the same person. I'm not like super confident on that now, but I wonder if one of them's her brother and is a projection of Mora's own memories of her brother who is dead and maybe died in a shipwreck or something like that, um, who is trying to help her escape this simulation by making her realise her role within it, which is as much as I can say without fully giving away what my theory is that will become clear in the next couple of scenes okay oh okay interesting um yeah so that that's mm, yeah okay so I, I'm, I'm just I can't, i'm really trying to regret uh, re, you know re- reject the idea of just skipping to your main theory here because you got me really interested <laughs> yeah. in it but yes uh, that was a nice little bit of breadcrumbs for us uh connor thank you there's a couple there's a couple of small things here um so people start tying themselves up. So Angel and Ramiro, first of yeah. all, Angel is like singing to himself, going mad. He's panicking. Like. He's panicking. He's panicking. He doesn't want yeah. to go back to, to jail or whatever. Um, also, <laughs> there's more to panic about now, isn't there? Um, Lucian <laughs> and Jerome fight, and then Jerome uh, ties them up, which was mm. uh, dead on of him. Um, yeah, it was kind of him. <laughs> very, very, very kind of him. Uh, yeah. So the rest uh, tie themselves up, um, and then. Adam Driver gets a uh, gets a message. Yes, and it says sink ship again. Yeah, not specific again. Although there's only one ship in play this time. There's only so, one ship there this time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but his is actually in Morse code as well. Um, or maybe they mean like the Olek um, uh, Lingyi ship. You know, everyone's shipping them together. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> sink it. That's awful. That's awful. Sink that ship. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. 
<laughs> That's one for the Zoomers out there. <laughs> 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 Two men in their thirties trying to appeal to like nineteen-year-olds. <laughs> Listen, that's half of my job is trying to appeal <laughs> yeah, to that's true, teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> got to stay. You got to stay on the pulse, Conrad. You yeah. stay on the pulse, oh, I, I haven't been on the pulse for so long that I've become. I've become cool again i think that's what's happened <laughs> to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm, I'm i'm right back on the way out and it'll be another 20 years before i'm there <laughs> there again yeah. you've you've, <laughs> you, you've escaped being chuggy by being so chuggy you weren't chuggy anymore. yeah exactly um, that's exactly what's happened and i fully understand <laughs> what that means <laughs> yeah okay uh Right, moving swiftly on uh, to more sort of 30-year-old talk here. Daniel goes to the machine. Uh, we mm. get the comedy guy. I don't know what actually the name of the comedy guy is still alive is, but we'll call no. him comedy guy. He starts questioning him. Uh, I don't know why Daniel just... Like, Daniel just take like take a second yeah. and properly tell this guy to leave him alone. There's so there's so many instances of this, like where Ike doesn't like talk Franz through his plans and stuff. It's like, just take the 30 seconds. Like, have the conversation. Be like, <laughs> yeah. look, the ship is sinking. You need to go above decks or whatever. But he yeah, just yeah. like... He's basically like, fuck off, I don't want to hurt you. And then this guy, <laughs> admittedly, is an idiot. He, he like tries to beat Daniel to death because he thinks he might be a wolf, which is like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely mental. It's definitely not uh, true. That he's not a wolf. I, I like I'm sure You're of that. one of them. You're one of them. He's <laughs> yeah. right. Um But yeah, um, I, like, in a in a strange like moment of you know like weird clarity as, as well as like sort of feeling at one with his friend Landon who left like for in Landon's honour. Yeah. He, he he called this guy a wolf and started yeah. trying to beat This is him. Ca- he's he's carrying the spirit of Landon on <laughs> with this punishment beating yeah. that he on his he garlic did. shoulders, yeah. Yeah, um. exactly. Um but but uh, yeah, Daniel says if I don't turn that thing off, everything will start again. So I did I, I actually wrote down earlier, I didn't mention it, that I thought that machine kicking off was obviously what set the siren off. So um yeah, this this is like kind of the heart of the computer mm-hmm. that's that's or the heart of this 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 program. Um, now I think, th- and this is like we're getting into that we're getting into the weeds here. Not like there's a couple of scenes with Mora coming up, but we'll fully, fully yeah, get yeah. into it. So I'll talk about it fully there. But there's a thing in databases, uh, like a query querying of databases called a Cartesian product, where essentially you produce an infinite loop of results because you mess up something in your query, and it's essentially like a recursive loop. Like it will always run and it will keep running and keep running and it will never be able to stop itself until eventually, like you'll get like a memory failure or something and the entire yeah. thing will fall over. I think that's what's happening with this simulation. I think we're stuck in a Cartesian product. Well, yeah, like the, it's it's basically an honest. This is this is a simulation made of the com, like built from the combined consciousnesses of all the people who are within it, and it has been running for so long that the person who is in or the thing that is in control of the simulation doesn't even remember why it's running anymore because it's just stuck in this recursive loop, um, and that is Daniel and the boys' goal is to break them out of it. Um, and I think that it's it's unclear how long they've been doing this for, but it could be like potentially hundreds of years or thousands of years. It's 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 madness to think about. So so Daniel and the boy are like sort of like IT guys who've been brought in to try and fix the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there. Daniel is essentially my self insert into this role. I'm just like, okay, I I know I I understand exactly how how this feels, <laughs> Daniel. Yeah, yeah. So, let me Google that for you. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna go to Stack Overflow and figure out how to sort this shit out. Okay. <laughs> brilliant uh okay as you said we do have a couple of more things coming up here mm. so mora approaches room 1011 which has been her room overall uh sort of on the boat as well as in this asylum or whatever you would call this place um what did you call it earlier you had a nice name for it uh institution i believe we'll call, was it, the... call it an institution sure institution sounds like somewhere like a guy called henry singleton would work so yeah. um mora approaches room 1011 now i'm not a, i'm not a big uh what do you call it george orwell buff right mm. uh but i know that room 101 is something to do with 1984 is, is yeah that, is that right? I, I have read 1984 but i honestly couldn't tell you what room 101 is in it it's just yeah. a frank skinner bbc vehicle yeah, I think, but... yeah exactly it's where you chuck things <laughs> when you don't like them that's this maybe is some sort of reference to that but i'm not i'm not up on all well i know 100 percent. we've got some listeners who who have read that book and know exactly what that is i really need to read that book but maybe 
let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, a little call to action there. Uh, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I remember about 1984 is uh, the fictional leader of the resistance is called Goldberg, and I read it when I was about 16 years old, and I was like, that's great. <laughs> Bill Goldberg, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can always hear the music and see the smoke before you see him walk into the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he wasn't a great leader of the resistance because everyone knew who he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he knew what he was coming. So, um, so okay, Mora uh, basically is in the room, turns around and sees her father. Says, yes. "Where is it? Where did you hide it? Where is it? Where did you hide it?" Yeah. Um, then Mora says doesn't answer the question just says where is kieran <laughs> yeah. um and dad says you aren't writing all of the right you aren't asking all of the i don't write what i wrote writing you aren't asking all of the right questions now i love that mm. that dialogue there these creators really really are meticulous with the dialogue the idea that you aren't asking all of the right questions implies to me that you're you are we're asking some of the right questions here yeah you know yeah. so oh Right. Okay. So uh, you're absolutely right. Yes. That like. So she is asking some of the right questions. Um, the first thing I think that's worth noting here is the mansion that she's walking through doesn't look very lived in or active. It's very run down. Mm. Uh, doesn't look very used until she gets into the room where she's accosted by Anton Lesser and his goons. Um, mm-hmm. Similar situation to Ike and his daughters, where he was like stepping through the chronology, if you like, of his family yeah. burning, where okay. it's like. Where, like the, the the sort of before during and after now um the light when she steps into that room i think she's stepping into like a different era of the mansion or institution because the lights are on there'd be no reason for the lights to be on if the whole the rest of the mansion was in like the state of disrepair um mm. that the the, the uh, or if this this room's in the same state of disrepair as the rest of the mansion so yeah brother's name's kieran where does she hide it this is all important stuff for mora uh, important stuff for her character and i think we're going to find we're, we're going to find out more about it as the show goes on i don't think this is as important as it's making it out to be for the wider mystery of what is going on here okay. um and i think anton lesser telling or her dad <clears throat> uh i'm just calling henry like that's, that's that's we find out what his name is in a, in a yeah. second um henry singleton telling her um that she's not asking all the right questions is it's not a memory <laughs> It's something else to do with who Henry Singleton actually is. Um, I can't really say any more of it than that. What I will say <laughs> in this scene, we'll get. Like, I think it's the next scene. I'm, yeah, we're, 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 getting, we're getting there. We're getting but um, yeah. So what I will say for this scene is might be absolutely nothing. But I was so fucking deep in the weeds on this episode. Every single scene, I was like, "What's going on here? What's going on?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when she, when she comes back out of the shaft after she's or when no sorry when she goes over to the shaft after she's woken up because she gets like injected in the neck and wakes up again in on the Kerberos, um, she goes over to look into the shaft and there's some very suspicious like video artifacting just on the dark bit of the mm. the shaft like the opening of the shaft and I was like. I, it might just be Netflix's servers and the compression being shit, but I wouldn't put it past them to be like hide a, hiding a QR code in that. So it was oh. at, it was at like thirty three twenty six, and when she's like checking her hands, and I tried to see if it was a QR code and tried to scan it, and I was like, no, that doesn't work. But I was also like, it's really weird that there's some video artifacting just there for that bit of the episode. So I don't know That's what that is, but. Take a screenshot, put it into, and like change the contrast and stuff to make it like properly readable. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's um, what that's probably what you need to do to, to to see if it is anything. But um, yeah, it could be nothing. Oh, but it seemed odd to me. That would be so interesting. That yeah. would be so interesting. Um, okay, so I got one thing to say before we move on and probably hear your big theory, right? Okay. And this is like, I talked about my head like going down the Brexit route so much, right? But <laughs> yeah. this is one where I was like stupidly going down it, and then I was like, hang on a minute, right? So wait to hear this, and I do say this for our benefit as well as for Stephen Crummy, who is our other listener from Northern Ireland, right? Okay. So, earlier in the season, we had uh, Mora being told by Daniel, you know, Mora, that's an Irish name, uh, but you're not Irish, okay? Now, that was really interesting to me. Um, and now we've got a brother called Kieran, which is very much an Irish name. Yes. And Kieran, uh, we've been told, you know, has been gone for a long time, okay? Mm. So, the, the, so there was a fracture between Kieran and uh, Mora somehow, and has been gone for a long time. Now, okay, okay, okay. How do I say this without offending anyone? So, we know that in Brexit, Northern Ireland became quite a big deal uh, in terms of that whole Brexit sort of thing, right? 
I, I'm just like throwing it out there. Kieran is the Republic of Ireland. Mora is Northern Ireland, right? The idea of like, you know, part of the UK, but not, you know, not part of the Republic of Ireland. Yeah. So, and they're, they're siblings because, you know, they're both on the island of Ireland. And the, <laughs> uh, there's something to it, Conrad. There's Maura's in, to Maura's it. in the DUP is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, because she, she says, yeah, I'm not Irish. Like she agreed that she agreed with Daniel that she's not Irish. So she must be in the DUP or something. But yeah. anyway, so I just, I just thought my head that was is so great. Br- that does work, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was something going on there. So I was like, so we're going to find out. Like even even the idea that you're you're sort of implying heavily now that more is going to be the main focus of stuff going on, and I'm just like, well, so was Northern Ireland, so was Northern Ireland. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's all there, it's all there, and it no is. one can convince me it's not. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's, I, it's I'm not, on board, on board with not, that theory. It's, it's it's not confirmation bias whatsoever. No. Um, so okay, so although I was I was uh, another one I saw on Reddit which was hilarious to me. So you've got this whole idea that there's a simulation of stuff, right? Now Kieran is also if you wrote it. Uh, out and read it CIA ran <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> so, so people <laughs> that's great so people are like is this it's the like, CIA it's gonna be like the X-Files they're gonna, <laughs> yeah. gonna, we're gonna see David Duchovny show up in the second season of oh, 1899 geez. Here's hoping, right? Okay, so uh, next team we get Mora gets back on the boat. Um, yeah, she was. This injected. is a doozy. Yeah, she's injected and she wakes up like uh, yeah. on the Kerberos. Yeah, she wakes up on the Kerberos. We get uh, Ike uh, basically uh, saying, "How did you disappear? What's going on?" She said it was the boy. Then we hear that her name is not Mora Franklin. Like I always, I always find it interesting. Like because obviously at this, this is the part where I, I haven't really focused on this too much to be honest with you, but I really have to punch the air here. Because I said from the start when I first saw the trailer where she was looking in the mirror and she said, my name is Maura Franklin. I was like, only people who aren't saying their real name say their name in the mirror, right? And I've said that for months now. And people, like, I'm sure people just thought, ah, that's a good point. But I never really got feedback from that except for people in the comments telling me that I was wrong, okay? So I'm sure there was hundreds (laughs) of people, I'm sure there was hundreds of people who just agree with me and just moved on to the next part of the video, but I never got that feedback, so I only ever got people telling me I was wrong. But, you know, screw you, I was right. Well, yeah, here's an affirmation for you, Anthony. That is a good point, actually, that, yeah, you you don't say, my name is so-and-so in the mirror unless you're pretending and, like, putting on an act. And I, I didn't spot that at all, but that makes perfect sense now. Yeah, so her name is Maura Singleton, um, and mm. uh, father is Henry Singleton. Yeah. She thinks this must be one of his experiments, because he does experiments with the brain and all this sort of stuff. He did yeah. take the three ships, they said, and do stuff with the ships. Um, now, this is the part which I, to be honest with you, I can't this help but laugh at this, because yeah. what a red herring. <laughs> what a red yeah, herring. Yeah, this is, this is ridiculous. What we're On, like, why did they do this? On the envelope, with the you know henry is on the envelope and we just like all this revelation about who henry is and what's going on and then uh all of a sudden they're saying oh i thought that letter was for your father or whatever she goes oh no no that's just me um yeah he called me henrietta uh oh he called me henriette um yeah so Mm. henry for short uh you know he he called me because he thought i was turning into my father but at the same time like what, what what was that red herring about that was really really ham-fisted i thought well i can tell i can tell you i'll tell you what it's about this is oh, like now we get to the crux of it right so we we've Here talked we about we've talked about singletons before and for anyone who's listening for the first time a singleton is a class that can only be instantiated once so it's effectively unique and it enforces its own uniqueness and it'll be on the, it, it'll be on the test it'll be yeah exactly we'll go well i'm taking everyone over to w3 schools after this and we're going to do a test (laughs) so single take that as read that we understand what a singleton is there can be only one singleton that's the important Mm -hmm. thing to understand so her dad's name is supposedly henry singleton yet here we have her name being confirmed as henry singleton she sees something like a, like she she is like has something that's addressed to Henry Singleton, and it's addressed to her. She yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, it's her middle name, and it's what her dad calls her. But bear with she's me. Hen- one she, second she's Henry. She's Henry Singleton. You're right. Yeah. She is Henry Singleton. Now, during this scene, she also says, as if to batter us over the head with it, um, that he thought I was sl- like talking about her brother. I think she is here. He thought I was slowly turning into a version of our father. But she's not turning into a version of her father, or well, she is. So, 
there's there's two there's two elements of this or there's two like kind of thrusts here there is Maura Henrietta of Singleton's uh, Henriette Henriette Henrietta I can't remember what she said her middle name actually Henriette and we will talk about it in what the dub okay so Henriette Singleton the person who had a traumatic relationship with her father probably lost her brother or fell apart like with mm-hmm. her brother due to familial issues and maybe he died tragically I think yeah. that is all being born out in what we see of Mora, and I think that's really interesting character work. Then there is Mora, the person who who is at the center of this um, uh, of this simulation, who is the class that wraps around the entire th- entire simulation. So Mora is the singleton. Henry Singleton, the person she is perceiving as her dad, is her own subconscious trying to well mixing up memories of her traumatic life with her father with her sorry mixing memories of her traumatic life with her father with her own subconscious trying to remind her that she is henry singleton and she is in control of this entire simulation and what is what has happened is i think she's formed some kind of like neural network of humans and is using their brains to power this network and and project this simulation and she is a part of it as well but it's been running so long or it's hit some kind of bug where she has forgotten who she is, she's forgotten she's in control of it and Daniel and the boy are trying to make her aware of who she is so that she can free everyone from the simulation. So that's like, (laughs) that's my big theory. It's actually two theories. So Maura is the class that wraps around the entire simulation um, and then her father did exist uh as he did as did the trauma she suffered at his hands but something has maybe corrupted her memory that's a that's a continuation of that theory and then he Daniel, left in the woods that trauma yeah that kind of stuff like bad parent stuff not like wild sci-fi experiment stuff and then daniel and the boy are trying to make her aware of who she is so that she, so they can free everyone from the simulation so mora is both protagonist and i guess antagonist of this mm. show at the same time. She just doesn't know it yet because she doesn't realise she's Henry Singleton, even though it's written out in front of her. So you think, if you are right with the simulation, and if we ever leave the simulation in some way in the show, Henry Singleton, or I, as I should sorry, I should say Anton Lesser, won't, won't be in charge of anything? You no. think this is literally just her manifesting it through her memories? Yeah, or I, I think he did exist, but I think he's long dead. I think, I think like, she for whatever reason like she is fully in control of this she probably created this but and she is uh she is kind of like manifesting memories of her father as an antagonistic force within this simulation but the reality is that it's all her own doing and she's just forgotten okay very very interesting um conrad i do want to ask you something though because uh i'm a bit confused what is the thing you said that you mentioned in passing in a previous episode and you want to expand upon here like in this episode have we have we hit upon it yet what i said that in a previous episode you said earlier in this episode oh, this that there one. was something that you said last week or the week before in oh. story <laughs> what's that about <laughs> well okay and we're not there yet we're, it's in the montage is the very end of the episode is what i need to talk about <laughs> i need to i need to because okay, I, okay, listen, okay. I listen back to the episode because i was like i think i said something about this and then i listened back to it and i was like i've gotta i've gotta mention this because uh, okay, okay 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 so we're not we're not quite there yet okay, okay no so all right so awesome that's, that's that was great theorizing there um really really cool um as well guys like stick around in the conrad theory matrix part of the episode we'll also just go through one by one all the all the all the theories we have this week so if you didn't catch them all in particular okay so um yeah the brother called her that and all that sort of thing we talked about that um so she also we, we sort of skipped over this but there's really not much to mention here i suppose like she talked about the idea that she was going to meet her brother in mm. southampton docks and then she said that uh then she didn't see him he's been missing four months but the prometheus left the day the day before so she assumes he's on that boat yeah Do, what do you like okay so in your mind we're definitely in a simulation here what's going on in terms of the ship stuff you know what i mean why what, what's with what's with that memory what does that mean well i mean i think it is like the kind of the the timing of it is weird because if it is like some crazy simulation um that's been running for for years and years then it's like why is she, why is she having memories of something in 1899 when this didn't mm. didn't exist um i think 
the 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 kind of meat of it like her following her brother um Mm -hmm. and running away from her father i think that is that's accurate to more of the person's experience in life i wouldn't be surprised to find out though that the period setting is actually an element of the of the simulation like they were kind of like we're all gonna like form this simulation in it's like westworld you know it's like exciting victorian world or whatever um and and it's actually that's actually not when this happened because you know she could have run away from her father and gone after her brother who she was supposed to meet in southampton in 2022 you know like that Mm -hmm. like all Mm -hmm. of that can still happen today so yeah i do wonder whether the period setting is like addressing for the simulation rather than when these things actually actually took place um so that's kind of, that's kind of my working theory at the moment yeah okay awesome uh right okay so uh Adam driver gives mcgregor the telegram yeah doesn't uh, end McGregor, well mcgregor yeah, mcgregor just turns him off yeah conor mcgregor has one of his own knock your end gauges and uh yeah. and just and just kills adam driver's character yeah what yeah what do you think about the fact that he has one of those i so, i wonder i think has a little thing yeah, so I mean, it, like you know, he he's he's kind of like the anti Daniel, I guess. Like he's kind of mm-hmm. operating to keep the simulation running. Um, it does throw a bit of a spanner into the works of my theory that Daniel was one doing all the killing because now someone else has got an engage that can do it yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, remains to be seen who who yeah. was actually responsible for that. It does. It does. Okay, so Ike and Mora. Um, oh, we didn't actually mention that they they went into uh, the shaft in in Ike's room. Yes. Uh, she she caught a bug. Um, yeah. A little beetle beetle used it. Uh, deployed so it herself. She. Um, uh, I think it's telling just very quickly that as she starts to become aware that she is also Henry Singleton, or really she is the Henry Singleton that she's able to now start manipulating bugs within the simulation. Like I feel like she is starting to approach consciousness of her role within the simulation um mm-hmm. and and that gives her an element of control over it that's interesting that's a really i actually really really like that thing you noticed there that's really i didn't notice that myself that's whoa that's a good point actually conrad uh just saying whoa. just saying you're convincing me you're convincing me here conrad uh you are convincing me okay anyway. <laughs> so uh uh, someone say, actually, someone even mentions in the Ike and Mora scene in the forest says, uh, or in the house or whatever, you think this is a dream. Um, yeah, and they're almost there. Is that like this? Ah, uh, like I haven't read what people think about this show. I've done my best to avoid it, um, but I have gotten some. I've gotten a sense that people that some people are disappointed about it. Now I don't. I don't let that color my impressions of it. But not not too many, Connor. Okay, well that's good to know. But like. The, the intricacies of the writing in this episode it are so, so good. Like, there's just, you know, Anton, Le- like, Henry Singleton saying, oh, you're, you're not asking the right questions yet. And then them talking about this being a dream. And it's like, you're almost there. You are almost yeah, yeah, at yeah. the right thing. And it's just like these scenes interplaying with each other and rewarding you for being like, oh, but he said this and now this is happening. Um, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, so good. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Obviously, obviously, I agree. I love these, love these writers. Um, so this is the part that actually I thought was really interesting. So Mora says, um, "I remember being a doctor in a mental hospital." Yep. But he is making me think I was a patient. Yes. I thought that was really interesting when she said that, and is- I didn't catch that on the first watch, to be honest. Yeah. So, is he? Or is it her own guilt at something she did that is protecting her from it by projecting her in this as a victim rather than the perpetrator? Because, Mm. you know, if we follow my theory through, if the entire simulation is her responsibility and there are actual humans within this, that's a fairly monstrous thing to do to to people who are alive. Um, So it stands to reason that the person who, who who did that might also be the kind of person who experiments on people in a mental facility or something along those lines. Um, mm-hmm. But the fact that maybe she feels guilty about it shows a certain amount of remorse and empathy. So maybe Mora will be a redeem, rede- redeemable character. But yeah, it's a really, really interesting kind of wrinkle to her that maybe she's actually the one in charge of these experiments. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then uh, just the the reveal, fully reveal, which we already knew that Ike was the captain of the Prometheus as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ike was being a bit of a, a dickhead there, not 
saying, yeah. like, you know, why was he was he keeping demand? that one quiet? Like, it, like he was literally demand, like, like locking ki- locking kids in cupboards and then yeah. demanding more. Say why more tell him why was he on the boat? Like he was literally there too. Um, okay, so uh, number just, in my notes it's point number twenty six. Just let the <laughs> listeners know why I was going to say number twenty six. Number twenty six. Um, <laughs> so I hope Daniel you're following turn- along at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you could figure out what the other ones were. Uh, so Daniel successfully turns the machine off. He's yeah. exhausted, but the sound does stop. So that's another bit of confirmation that they actually did hear the sound. And mm-hmm. then obviously, if anyone was continuing to try and walk off the edge, they'd stop now. And in fact, actually, we see Mrs. Wilson, yeah. Virginia, almost went over. Okay. Yes. So this links back, I think to the tea drinking in the first episode where everyone drank at the same time uh, yeah, well, yeah. not not everyone but a, a, a certain subsection of the of the passengers uh drank at the same time um so i i that think, works with your it works with your clock thing yeah so i think everyone who drank was part of the program and not actually a real person and they drank on command because that was a command that was issued to them to do it um mm. I we'll think see. you got some good points there, Connor. But uh, I think if you remember correctly, like Ling Yi was also part of the uh, the drinking. At the same Did she time. actually drink at that point? I thought her and her mum didn't. To be honest, I think, that the, was my I, I, I think the only one who didn't drink in the whole room was Mora. Oh really? Okay. Well, I mean that lends itself to other theories I have as well. Then, but um, yeah. So I, I mean, I'll let you know that. I'll let you know that because I do enjoy saying you're wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <even> if... <laughs> yeah, quite right too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right anyway okay so we've got some uh mrs wilson almost went over we've got some uh she said she had the strangest of dreams now that's one question mm. i've i've had uh about this episode when i first watched it was why didn't anyone ask her what dream was she, she having because she was like we're having the strangest of dreams what were you thinking as you were walking towards the edge i would love someone to ask her that you know yeah well i mean and i think it it, it leans into this idea that like this is like a dream for them in the sense that like when you wake up from it you can only kind of like just grasp at the edges of what you were actually dreaming about like it fades and like they don't know what they were like they don't understand that they're in a simulation most Mm -hmm. of the time um and this is the closest they'll ever get to it so they probably wouldn't even think to ask those kinds of questions because it's it it doesn't make sense to them within the context of this existence Mm -hmm. um but it would be yeah it'd be a good question to ask if they could remember to do it Oh, I would love it. I would love it. Uh, okay, so then we have, uh, just to end this part of the episode, before the final scene, we get um, McGregor giving Ike the sink, sink ship message. Yeah. Uh, then we actually get the wizard by Black Sabbath starting. Yeah. Bit of um, Black Sabbath. And, and then uh, Daniel says, they don't mean the Prometheus, they mean us. Um, yeah. And that sort of ends this part of the thing. So basically, not really much to say there, to be honest with you. Just mm. revealing to characters things we already knew, like the yeah. idea that this is referring to the Kerberos potentially. Uh, it's interesting as well that Daniel is the one to sort of point that out. Anytime Daniel points something out at this stage in the show, I'm thinking to myself, what is he trying to get them to realize? Yeah, like because he... we know he doesn't want it to sink, so it's weird yeah. for him to offer clarification. But I mean, uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Maybe maybe he's hoping they'll be like, well, we're obviously not going to do that, and like rally to <laughs> rally to his side. Or, or maybe now that he's turned the uh, turned the machine off, he's like, I sink the bastard. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, all right. So point thirty one for anyone keeping keeping up at home. There. Um, Here, so, we Here we go. Here we go. This is the this <laughs> one, the, big the big one. Point thirty one. The big one. So I couldn't be bothered at this point. In the episode I couldn't be bothered writing notes. So mm. I've literally just drawn a picture of the man with a little like <laughs> mu- mus- mustache. Yeah, this guy's great. Um, and uh, he comes in. Now this is I. I said to Connor before we started recording. This is like the only end of the like. I think the the ship going ploop would maybe rival it a little bit, but in episode three. But this is the only episode which I properly laughed out loud at the ending of yeah. the idea. This guy comes in and goes, "Sir, we just received a message from Project Kerberos." <laughs> yeah. I think he even says Kerberos. Yeah. Uh, and he like puts puts the triangle message down in front of uh, Henry Singleton, mm. um, and then uh, Henry Singleton says. Tell him he doesn't have much time. He needs to bring me the boy. Uh, and then he goes over and looks out the window at this big black pyramid. So what what do you think about this ending, Connor? Okay, so let's. I'm gonna start small, and I'm gonna build up to the to the bigger <laughs> stuff. So small stuff. He doesn't have much time. He needs to bring me the boy. I assume he's talking about Conor McGregor there. That seems like Conor McGregor seems like his man on the inside. Yeah, uh, well, I think me. I think it's also kind of confirmation that what he's 
putting into those triangle buttons seems to be what's in front of Henry Singleton on this paper. Mm. That's what I took from it when I first watched it. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's... I, I actually tried to de- decipher that triangle message as well, and it seems like cardinal <laughs> directions. But it, like, if you translate it into Morse code as, like, uh, with the... Dots like, and, as dashes, dots and yeah. dashes, it's like... But it makes no sense. It's like west, east... Uh, a N N W E A N N. It's w- it's weird. I don't understand it. But so maybe I was translating it to the wrong thing. Um, <coughs> but yeah. So he's talking to Conor McGregor. The mm. man is dressed like the his 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 boy uh, is dressed <laughs> yeah. like a character from Star Trek the original series, and I love that. It's so good. <laughs> like, I was I was like, there's like 70, 80, 70s, like late sixties, seventies technology everywhere. Uh, this is presumably the same setting that we saw um, those monitors in in at the end of episode two. Was it end of episode two? Episode three. You oh, I'm going to say something. Be- before you keep going, I'm going to actually p- bring a question to you. Go on. You said in a previous episode when you were talking about Henry Singleton being the class which wraps around. I then questioned you to say, does that mean that everything we've seen, including the Henry Singleton stuff, is within the simulation? Yeah. And you said yes. yes. But now you're saying that Mora is the Henry Singleton and the only Henry Singleton that matters. So do you still believe that this Project Koboros big black pyramid part is still part of the simulation what do you yes think? yeah yeah this is still part of the simulation this is all okay. this there's a, there's a whole level to this that we don't even know about <laughs> yet like that's my that's my stance like so you've got okay. 1899 level which is like we're fancy victorians on a ship and then you've got the project kerberos like shitty 70s sci-fi level or shitty 60s sci-fi level which is another level and also the thing that i was going to mention that i said i couldn't talk about until the end of the episode i'll say it now um before i get too deep into into my theorizing we were talking in the last episode about how andreas peachman kind of gave away where they were going to be filming uh by saying yeah, oh yeah, you know, it's yeah. difficult to like fi- like oh you don't have to film in the desert or film in the mountains because we have the volume to film it yeah, yeah, yeah. and i jokingly as a joke said uh like oh you know yeah you shouldn't have told everyone we were going to be filming in space andreas peachman and we all had a good right. laugh and now we've got people dressed like characters from fucking star trek to, <laughs> to turning up all i'm saying is it wouldn't surprise me if at star some trek. point if at some point in this uh, this series someone goes to space <laughs> like that's my that like you don't wear those kind of outfits unless you're trying to evoke like star trek and like bad sci-fi so i yeah i i don't know how but i was joking about it at the time and then i saw this and i was like well clearly that's the direction we're going in <laughs> uh, i i honestly you mentioned that's a star trek outfit i don't remember i, I know it's like it's like a beigey white thing or something yeah i don't it's like remember, a jumpsuit yeah, I, I, for some reason, I, it's funny how your mind went straight to Star Trek there because I didn't think anything of it except for like this is like a funny like you know experimental outfit. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, I, I was I was immediately like that guy drives around the moon on like a little car with like one of those big bubbles on it, <laughs> like, <laughs> like the fucking Jetsons. Um, All right, okay. Yeah. So is that in, is that in the theory? Maybe now we. It isn't. I should put it in, but it was just kind of like when I saw this, I was like, I can't believe I was joking about going to space and now they're doing this i might i I mean if you literally just put in someone will be in space that would be hilarious i'll put i'll put okay i'll put in at the end someone will be in space. you've talked about it you've talked about it twice now conrad you can't not have it it was yeah it it was it was a joke at first and then and then now they've ended an episode there you go someone will be in space end of the theory matrix there you go um but Uh, yes so um to answer your question then yes this and also uh the pyramid outside in the snow beautiful and yeah. really really cool uh imagery but yeah this is all still part of the simulation that mora is in control of this is a red herring it's a very cool red herring and i love it but i think there is going to be a level to this that we haven't even seen yet where wherever the simulation is like however what uh, the 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 re- and the reason i think this is because this ha this is like kind of 60 sci-fi is the vibe i get from this but that's the the technology we see here it's like telephones and monitors and that kind Mm. of stuff it isn't the the kind of technology required to create a simulation out of the minds of people who are in the simulation like that's a level of sci-fi hundreds if not thousands of years removed from this so uh, so that's why i think this is all this is all still part of the part of the set dressing until we get to the real stuff Okay, very interesting, very interesting. All right, Conrad, well, uh, one more question before we go into the next uh, Conrad Theory Matrix section. But my question is, what 
is going on with the pyramid so why why do these pyramids exist or pyramid because i can't figure out actually whether the pyramid we saw in the opening credits uh of the first episode well not the opening credits but the opening montage or whatever in the first episode and this pyramid are the same because i don't remember actually seeing a building in that in, in that landscape with the pyramid at the beginning no of the i did i didn't notice this one either to be honest so so that's why in my mind there's multiple pyramids i i, I don't i can't hand on heart say i've ever seen two pyramids uh in you know shown to us as if they're different but i don't remember seeing a, a building near the other one so uh my question to you is this pyramid here we see henry looks out the window over at the pyramid like basically he's been he's got a message from the kerberos he then project kerberos he then goes and opens his curtain and looks at the pyramid mm. so it, what's the connection here well i think the same the simplest answer to that is Obviously, these pyramids were built by aliens. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> and I say that as a joke, but that's probably actually the case. <laughs> I think, like, I mean, if if you really want my like shoot from the hip theory on that, pyramids were built by aliens. Humans discovered them, discovered technology within them that uh, gave humanity the ability to create these kind of simulations that all of this is happening within and memories of the pyramids of discovery of those pyramids is filtering through the memories of the people who <coughs> have, who are constructing the simulation into the simulation itself so like basically what you've got here is and, and it's literally in front of us on screen. It's why it's so cool. Is this just uh, this melting pot of memories of uh, you know a bit, like some people's memories are taking place in like eighteen ninety nine Victorian times. <clears throat> some people's memories are taking place in like the nineteen sixties. But the, the the setting or the the time that they're taking place is actually just set dressing, if you like. The the actual things happening. So the memories of the pyramids, the memories of the abuse of uh, by Mora's father, uh, the memories of his family burning to death. That stuff stuff did actually happen but it's all kind of bleeding into this simulation so i i genuinely do think that the pyramids are some kind of alien technology that has contributed to humanity learning to create this simulation and it's i don't know whose memories mora's or uh, someone else's who worked on those pyramids is is bleeding into the simulation now Right. Oh, okay, guys. Well, there, there, so there, there it is. is. I think some I think big Con swings. Conrad's, Conrad's theories have officially jumped the shark. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to hearing all about these aliens next week again. Right. So, with, I haven't said that. Let's uh, let's jump into the theory matrix now. <laughs> Brad Conrad, take us through your theories for this week. Okay, there's a few of them, so I'll go quickly. Number one, Anton Lesser isn't Henry Singleton. That one didn't go well. Um, <laughs> Tova either had an abortion or murdered her abuser. Hedge my bets on that one. I'll 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 let you decide when I need to be pinned down to one or the other. Um, okay, okay. The boy is in control of the entire simulation. Almost immediately proven wrong, I think. But like, I haven't actually marked it as wrong yet, but I'm fairly sure that is wrong. Uh... The clock is the literal clock of a computer processor. Those who march off to the uh, march off the ship to the clock are elements of the program, not real people in the simulation. Daniel or the boy are Mora's brother, Kieran. Uh, the simulation is caught in a recursive loop or Cartesian product where it will just cycle endlessly. Mora is Henry Singleton, i.e. she is the unique class that wraps around this entire simulation and controls it. Daniel and Boy are trying to make Mora aware that she is Henry Singleton and in control of the simulation so that they can free everyone from it. Anton Lesser is talking about Conor McGregor when he says he needs to bring him the boy and someone will be in space. <laughs> I could also put in that the pyramids are alien. <laughs> I like it. Shove answer. it in. Shove it in. We'll do it. Because yeah. we'll, we'll get to the end and do our Conrad Theory Matrix like, you know, mini episode and we'll read that out and we'll <laughs> piss herself um I, I will say i will say the one where you're the whole thing about like you know more is the class just wraps around and controls or whatever mm. like in terms of the way that the show could reveal that because you mentioned the idea that she like basically they're saying like you know ask the creator and you're like i think we all know who the creator is so basically that that, that theory sort of amounts to mora is said creator yeah yeah i That's, think i think mora yeah. is the creator i don't think she remembers um yeah. but yeah that's who that's so who if, if that turns out to be the case we'll say that that theory is correct then um okay uh because you know in terms of like i don't expect them like to pull out 
I mean, you never know. We did have a literal science explanation in uh, Dark Episode uh, 7, Season 3. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but I don't expect someone to pull out a whiteboard and say, listen, a class wraps around. Like, yeah. I don't think we're going to get that. We, so, we, we well, cut to the year tw- 2550, <laughs> and Ike stands before us in a lab coat. He's like, listen, this episode's going to be a little boring, but I've got I've got <laughs> yeah. to take you through this. All right? So yeah, let's yeah. just bear with me. It all started with Yon Chifrisa in 2018. <laughs> yeah. It all started with a little movie called The Matrix. And then- <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, right, let's get into What the Dog. Okay, this week's What the Dog. I'm going to try and be quick because we have went quite long on this episode. Basically, I listened to this episode, this show in the in the dub uh, just so I can make notes while I'm watching it and stuff. I've already watched it the first time through with the sub. Uh, obviously, I prefer the sub. Sometimes the dub gives us hilarious moments. This moment is hilarious, but not quite because of the dub. So, basically, whenever I was watching this, right, uh, this episode, Henry... I was going to say... I was gonna say Henrietta, right? Yeah. So, okay. I was going to say... So, Maura reveals that her middle name is Henriette. Mm-hmm. Now, I vividly remember, vividly remember, <laughs> when I first watched this, that it was Henrietta. Right? Yeah. Vividly. vividly. That, was my, that was my memory as well, to be honest. Yeah. So, I started... I think we've been Mandela affected in like a week. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I started listening to the dub, right? And and I was like, listen to the dub. And then it was like, bing, bing, bing. She just said Henriette. I was like, oh my God, the stupid dub, right? You absolutely, <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. So I wrote, down a, I wrote down a little point. What the dub? Henriette, what idiots, right? I actually literally like put a little laughing face on my, on my notes here. Then I realized, she Maura speaks English. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so she wasn't dubbed. Yeah. So this week's what the dub is me being yeah. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that I had really got him. Like, so it, it was Henriette. I don't yeah. know why the hell I thought it was Henrietta. Henriette um, is a better name. Let's be honest. Like that's. I mean, I think take... it's probably because Henriette. I didn't think Henriette was a real name. Let's no, be that, yeah, uh, I think that's. That, I think that's exactly the same angle I came at that from. Like Henriette's not a real name. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah, so that's anyway. What the dub this week was all on me, guys. So sorry about that. Um, right, let's head into Conrad's post, pre, whatever they are thoughts. Uh, okay, wow. So there was um, a lot of very awesome programming stuff uh, in that episode. A lot of food for thought. A lot of things to sink my teeth into. I'm sure we've just discussed them uh, in the episode of. Uh, the podcast that's just been, so I'm not going to rehash them. But uh, my Im- immediate thoughts were: there's a lot, a lot going on in this episode. A lot, lot revealed. Um, I have to mention it here. I'm sure I've mentioned it multiple times in the episode you just listened to. But the 70s or late 60s, early 70s kind of shitty sci-fi aesthetic that we're dipping into now is something I'm a big fan of. I hope we get a lot more of that. Uh, that's that's great stuff. Um, I've been saying since the first episode, I think the Kerberos is going to sink. Surely that's coming up. Episode seven or eight, that must happen. Uh, that, that's gonna, that's got to be the big payoff for season one. Um, and yeah, based on where the characters are positioned throughout this episode that's just been, I'm going to say in the next episode, Conor McGregor and Daniel are just going to have to have a fist fight to the death on the upper decks. Um, a, a mano-y-mano combat in which one of them dies. And hopefully Ramiro, with his incredibly powerful kicks, doesn't get involved, because that'll be a decider. Um, But yeah, what an episode. Cannot wait for the next one, and I will see you all next week. Well, Conrad, season one... I say season one because I really do hope it gets renewed. Um, It's definitely going to be renewed. Come on. The the numbers are through the roof, Conrad. You wouldn't know this, actually, but... The uh, the viewing has it like in the last month or something. It's been number three on Netflix overall. It's, well, it's mainly me that's doing it, I think, because I'm rewatching <laughs> yeah. like every scene. I'm just I'm, like, I'm, I'm making an hour episode to last like three hours. Yeah, like the the, the series has actually had uh, over a billion uh, watches, uh, nice. which is cr- which is actually crazy when you think about it. Because like if you're talking, you're talking about YouTube stats, like you are li- you're literally talking like. You know, only like the biggest pop songs in the world have those those stats. So, yeah, I I, th- I think that's that's really cool. Um, so okay, so eighteen ninety nine, hopefully coming back. What did you think about episode five here, Conrad? Overall, uh, give me ten seconds on it. It, it was there was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. A lot happened in this episode. Um, yeah, 
<laughs> look forward to a lot happening next week uh, yeah uh, i hope next week is like a little bit more chilled out to be honest i just want like yeah ike hanging out with oleg that's all i want yeah. <laughs> in the next episode no problem at all well conrad uh, i know obviously people listening to this in two years time if they've just watched the show aren't going to take anything from this but i'm gonna say happy christmas uh we'll see everyone after christmas um season's and this will be the last episode be- yeah. before that season season's greetings happy holidays all that sort of stuff enjoy your time with your family everyone um and we will see you next week thank you very much for watching subscribe like all that sort of stuff goodbye goodbye <laughs>